Men who are ruined after dating Kim Kardashian. Oh, wait. A Kardashian? How much are the Kardashians worth? Mon Cole. What? Two billion dollars? I thought it was going to be like 100 mil. 200 mil? The devil works hard, but Kris Jenner works harder. The momager of six has built a multi-billion dollar empire by keeping the Kardashian-Jenner name in the media. But the one tactic that works best is high-profile relationships, since people can't help but be overly invested in celebrity couples. Kardashian relationships are often short-lived, and they tend to be a bit one-sided. There have been countless men whose careers or personal lives suffer due to their association with the family. This is known as the Kardashian curse. Today we are going to look at the stories of men whose lives may have changed for the worse because oh of their relationship Play with the Kardashian, starting with Ray J. Ray J was a teenage R&B sensation. In 1997, when he I was just 16 years old, his single, Let It Go, peaked at number 25 on the US Billboard Hot 100 after it appeared on the Set It Off soundtrack. He continued this momentum in 2001 with his second single, Wait A Minute, featuring rapper Lil' Kim, which Wait peaked at number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100 and helped establish Ray J as a mainstream R&B artist. He also ventured into acting, earning roles in popular sitcoms like Moesha and The- Bro, I hated Moesha. I, I, I couldn't, I just could not get into Moesha whatsoever. I remember watching it as a kid and I'm like, it's just too slow. I, I just could not get into it. It was, I just did not like Moesha. Sinbad show. Sorry. He had every quality to be a multifaceted superstar in Hollywood. It was too slow. Then he met Kim Kardashian. During a brief musical Want to chat if you get your life ruined by dating a Kardashian hiatus, Ray J began dating Kim in 2003 after meeting her while she was working as a stylist for his sister, Brandy. The couple dated for three years, during which they made an explicit tape that would later catapult Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Have you guys watched this tape? It's not even good. Like, honestly, we should react to it on stream because it's barely fucking porn. Like, it is mid as fuck. Honestly, I was very disappointed with this this tape. Who am I kidding? I was like eight years old. I didn't watch this shit. Kim into the spotlight. However, at this time, Kim was just another valley girl whose only claim to fame is being the daughter of the lawyer who represented O.J. Simpson. So the public- I didn't know that! What the fuck?! ...was generally unaware of their that relationship. They separated sometime in 2006, film. and Ray J continued seeing the success of his recently released third studio album titled- Does your grandma need a new eye too, man? ...Radiation, featuring his most iconic single, One Wish. But it was after their breakup where things got bad for Ray J and great for Kim. Kim began working as a stylist for her childhood friend Paris Hilton, frequently accompanying Hilton to events and parties. Paris had a tape leak in 2004, three years earlier. Conveniently at Wait, what did Paris Hilton's- what did, what did her tape do? Hilton to events and parties. Paris had a tape leak. Sex video gives Paris Hilton publicity three money? Three years earlier. Conveniently, at the same time her reality TV show, The Simple Life, first debuted. Did you guys watch her sex tape? It was also Omega Mid. Okay. The tape and show combined launched Paris into fame. It just so happens that the Kardashian family had a reality TV show on the brink of releasing in 2007. Keeping up with the Kardashians. In February of that year, the explicit tape of Ray J and Kim made in 2003 titled Kim Kardashian Superstar leaked onto the internet and garnered significant public interest and media attention. Kim filed a lawsuit against Vivid Entertainment for distributing the film, but this was all a part of the plan. Kim and her mother took Paris Hilton's strategy, and it worked flawlessly. Kim addressed the tape on The Tyra Banks Show and insisted that she didn't want it out there. However, she dropped the lawsuit just three months earlier and settled for $5 Not million, giving Vivid permission to market and sell copies of the tape. Sales from the film reportedly generated nearly $1.5 million in revenue in the first six weeks. The controversy surrounding this tape was used to market season one of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Episode one included a large segment about her tape and Kim's feelings about the leak. It was talked about heavily throughout season one, and this show launched Kim into becoming a household name in Hollywood. But nobody knew this was calculated at the time. And Wait, that's... The mom pimped out her child? And Ray J is that what you got like from that? Bad guy That's what I got from that. Material. But temporarily, it did help his career. His 2008 album, All I Feel, debuted at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 200, and he had his highest charting single ever with Sexy Can I, peaking at number 3. He I then like tried to song. compete with Kim in the reality TV world with his dating show, For the Love of Ray J, which lasted two seasons and averaged over 2 million viewers. But that was his final peak. His next reality show was cancelled after two seasons, and his music career dwindled. After not hearing a Ray J song for three years, we got 
blindsided by the controversial track, I Hit It First, featuring Bobby Brackens in April 2013. This song was very obviously about Kim, especially looking at the music video. The song peaked at number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 and gave Ray J his first Hot 100 entry in years. Then Ray J reportedly sent Kim and Kanye a check that totaled his profits off the sex tape as a wedding gift, further taunting them. Although on the surface this well, seems like good. a W for Ray J, it really just made him look jealous and desperate to get back into the yeah, spotlight. It does, for sure, Aside but from it's appearing cool. on various reality shows over the years, Ray J's legacy is mostly known today not as an early 2000s R&B star, but rather the guy who made a tape with Kim Kardashian. Ray J was just a pawn to get Kim introduced to Hollywood, and he fell right into the trap. However, Reggie Bush would become the blueprint of how the Kardashians use relationships Reggie to line Reggie Bush? Wasn't he a football player? Reggie Bush was the most dominant college football player in the country during his time at the University of Southern California. He played a key role in helping USC win back-to-back -back national championships in 2003 and 2004. In 2005, Bush won the prestigious Heisman Trophy, awarded to the most outstanding player in college football. Posting a Reggie Bush highlight video was a cheat Tyler, code for a million views on YouTube in 2006. He was basically the first athlete to become a social media celebrity before he got to the big stage. Damn. Just a few days before entering the NFL, he signed a $1 million per year endorsement deal with Adidas, then more endorsements with Pepsi, Pizza Hut, General Motors, and Subway. The New Orleans Saints drafted Reggie with the second overall pick in the 2006 NFL Draft. Reebok cool. had received over 15,000 orders for Bush's Saints jersey just one week after the draft. Reggie's popularity and social media. That's like Minecraft level of merch, Chad. That's like crazy. Media presence made him the perfect candidate to be Kim Kardashian's boyfriend. During that offseason, Reggie attended the 2007 ESPY Awards where he was introduced to Kim through a mutual friend. At the time, Kim was still dealing with the aftermath of her tape with Ray J and was gradually elevating to superstar celebrity status. They began she dating shortly after, different. and their relationship was on full display and keeping up during season two. In episode uh, nine, Kim shoots a sexy calendar for Reggie, mods, claiming it's for his eyes only, even though there are TV cameras recording the entire shoot for millions of fans at home. But then her mother, Chris, distributes the calendars for public sale. Obviously, this situation was scripted for TV. This was never going to be exclusive to Reggie, and they knew the calendar would be sold to the public. Yo. They just needed to fill out 30 minutes of television and twist the narrative. Men dating the Kardashians have to understand that nothing about their life is private, and their girlfriends will twist their real lives to fit the format of reality television. Reggie was a humble and quiet guy. This one paparazzi interaction alone, you could see how much Kim loved the spotlight, and Reggie didn't. I cut the light off, remember? Reggie, what's up? Peace sign, <laughs> This type of attention every time you try to go out to a restaurant will wear down on someone. Reggie's brother chimed in on their relationship many years later. Do you ever wish that you were Kim Kardashian's brother-in-law. <laughs> never, never, never. I never really liked her. So. You didn't? No, not at all. Why not? No, she was, she was too much. She was, too she was too much for the family. We couldn't. How, how so? Just just too much. Bleach. Despite this, it seemed like the couple were destined to settle down together. The anticipation of the wedding made for great TV. Kim and Reggie just seemed so in love. But one day, everything changed. Due to the demands of Reggie's football commitments and Kim's continued exponential success, the couple broke up for the first time in 2009, citing their desire to focus I remember on their this respective was huge careers. Me. Season 3 of Keeping Up documented their fallout and how Kim was dealing with the breakup. You look like a slob, to put it mildly. And this place is oh, what? I deserve to be a slob. Yeah. This is how people live when they're like really depressed. So maybe I'm really depressed. Season 4 showcased Kim wanting to get back together with that him, which they did briefly get back together in 2010 before calling it quits again. The entire Does rise and fall feel of their like relationship <laughs> was made for TV, but never showed Reggie's side of the situation, which is crucial to protect the Kardashians' image, cut out all the things that maybe make them look bad. In fact, they often try to make the men look like the weak ones. For example, a press release after their breakup said, Kim is going to be fine either way. She travels the world and has created brands. He just can't keep up. Which oh, is true, Reggie up. could not keep up with all of the failed brands that Kim was creating. The Kardashian card, a prepaid debit card that was taken off the market within a month. Fuck yeah, I would have bought that right criticism. now. The card I had extremely totally high had that. fees and was marketed to teenagers who are less educated on personal finance. Then there was Kardashian Color, a nail polish line with 14 different colors with goofy names like Chloe Had a Little Lamb and <laughs> is Ready for a Petty. Can't forget Quick Trim, the dieting supplement that promised you to reach your weight loss goals. Wait, that wasn't real. I bought that. Uh, 
Well, it was bogus and they got hit with a $5 million lawsuit. Then there was Kim's Skechers Shape Up Sneakers, in which advertisements that claimed fake? that the shoes would help people lose weight and oh. strengthen and tone their butt, legs, and abdominal muscles. Because of the deceptive ad, Skechers had to pay a $40 million settlement after losing a class action lawsuit. Now, Reggie said himself that he failed to live up to expectations on the football field during their relationship. Critics said he was overhyped in college, and his Kardashian Ooh. fame made him even more overhyped, which could be true. But he had a solid career. He became a Super Bowl champion with the New Orleans Saints in 2010, and then went on to play some of his best football in the three years after the breakup with Kim. Reggie was go. inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame in 2019. While Kim's brands and relationships were failing, the Ooh, reality show drive. writers needed storylines for there season four of Keeping Up. Luckily, Khloe Kardashian and Lamar Odom became official extremely fast, which ended in him almost losing his life. Lamar Odom decided to skip college and head straight into the 1999 NBA draft, where he was selected as the fourth overall pick by the Los Angeles Clippers. Standing at 6'10", Odom's ball handling ability, passing skills, and court vision were remarkable for a player of his size. He was highly regarded as a teammate and valued for his unselfish play and willingness to sacrifice for the team's success. This unselfishness and now. consistent production landed him on the Los Angeles Lakers, where he played alongside Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol helping the franchise win a championship in the 08-09 season. During that offseason, Lamar met Khloe Kardashian at a party for a fellow NBA player, Ron Artest, in August of 2009. With her, I was like, if I do what I normally do, I'm gonna lose her. And if I lose her, I think it's going to hurt a lot. Right then and there, I knew. We were together every day. It only took three weeks before the couple took their next step in their Shut relationship up. and got engaged. It may seem like it's a what? quick wedding to everyone else, but Khloe knows what she wants. The proposal was recorded and aired on an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, oh, where Lamar God. began regularly appearing. Just nine days after oh, getting engaged, God. Lamar and Chloe tied the knot in September 2009. Oh, after the couple was officially married, they signed a deal to co-star on a new oh, reality show God. with Chloe and Lamar, which would focus on their life together and the first year of their no. marriage. This relationship was great for business. Like many initially involved with the Kardashians, Lamar played great during the 2009-2010 NBA season, helping the Lakers secure back-to-back championships. His excellence on the court continued into the next season, and he was awarded the NBA Sixth Man of the Year. The couple's reality show, Chloe and Lamar, debuted on E! in 2011, which averaged about the same viewers as Keeping Up. During this time, Lamar and Chloe were one of Hollywood's more prominent power couples. Chloe may have even taken a bit of spotlight away from Kim. Fans were just obsessed with her and Lamar. Together, they'd create a His Her fragrance line, Unbreakable Love by Chloe and Lamar, Lamar doing, along with various brand deals and sponsorships. Sadly, Lots. it was all about to come crashing down. Lamar's reputation as a reliable role player in the NBA was dwindling. From 2011 to 2013, he was traded twice. The initial trade from Los Angeles to Dallas is where Odom felt his career was over. That trade from the Lakers basically ended my career and purpose. I was never really myself ever again. Being in LA, the structure, the people I knew, it hurt leaving. I had great memories with the Lakers, with Kobe and Powell. That was a special time in my life. Now labeled a journeyman, Odom was experiencing career low statistics on the court, and his personal life was even worse. Around mid-2013, cheating rumors consumed media headlines. While Chloe initially supported her husband, she filed for a divorce in late 2013 after months of speculation about Lamar's substance abuse issues. Lamar details one dark night in his book. While on a bender of cocaine and ecstasy, he grabbed Chloe forcefully in a fit of rage and said, I screamed, out of my mind. You trying to embarrass me in front of my friends? I'll effing kill you. You don't know what I'm capable of. Lamar was a violent addict. He also said his biggest regret was that I couldn't keep my dick in my pants or the out of my nose. These substance abuse issues led to a DUI and a stint in rehab. Their toxic relationship was constantly making headlines. It was a reoccurring segment of many Keeping Up with the Kardashians episodes. But Lamar didn't want to get divorced. He avoided ending his marriage for nearly two years before finally signing the papers. This all reached a tipping point one night where Lamar nearly lost his life. In October 2015, Lamar sought the company of two women working at a Nevada brothel, planning a four-day stay where he spent $75,000. At Love Ranch, Odom would have a near-fatal overdose. He became comatose and was placed on life support in a hospital in Las Round Vegas, where he sex. suffered 12 strokes and endured six heart attacks as his heart stopped twice, and doctors told friends and family to prepare for the worst. Fortunately, he regained consciousness and was transferred to Los Angeles to begin his recovery journey. In the aftermath of the incident, Chloe withdrew her request for a divorce. She stated that she had not reconciled with Odom, but wished to assist him in making medical decisions during his recovery. Come early okay. 2016, Lamar was making strides in 
and his recovery while Chloe provided emotional and financial support, remaining by his hospital bed day and night. Once Chloe felt as though Odom was back on his feet, the divorce was finalized in December of that year. Through it all, it does seem like Chloe genuinely cared for Lamar. He was okay. clearly not ready for this level of fame, and they obviously rushed into a relationship to capitalize yeah, I, on the money and ratings nice, to generate. Honestly. Turns out, his demons got the best of him. But he wasn't the only basketball player to fall victim to oh, the Kardashian damn. curse. Kendall Jenner has dated at least seven different NBA players. Bro, I thought this was a Mr. Beast thumbnail. What the fuck is this? Something a famous meme in the NBA community, Kendall's starting five. Now, a lot of NBA fans like to it indulge the in the best. idea that Kendall ruined these players' performance, but it's an extreme weak argument, because many of these situations can be attributed to just normal ups and downs in a ball player's career. Jordan Clarkson dated Kendall in 2016 and had a slight dip in performance the next couple seasons, but bounced back and has been playing better than ever for the past three years. The same can be said for Kyle Kuzma, who dated Kendall in late 2018 to mid-2019, had I a slight dip in D. performance the next two seasons, but again bounced back immensely for the past two years. Ben Simmons briefly dated Kendall in 2018, but didn't see a major decline in his performance until 2022, four years later. Devin Booker played great the entire time he was dating Kendall. Phoenix Suns fans just like to blame her because they got outplayed by the Bucks in the 2021 NBA Finals. Blake Griffin is probably the one who had the worst down. This is the only one I know that dated her. I don't know any of those other guys, but I do know this guy's name. Downfall after dating Kendall. In summer of 2017, Blake separated from the mother of his children, Bryn Cameron, thinking he was going to get serious with the 22-year-old model. Why does this guy look like a more Giga Chad taller version of Los Polos? During their time together, Kendall was frequently spotted courtside while Blake was playing for the LA Clippers. In September 2017, a source told People that the relationship was nothing serious. Blake is doing everything in his power to make Kendall his girlfriend, but she's keeping him at an arm's length because she knows how busy she is. Which makes you wonder what type of mixed signals were happening that Blake would leave his family for a fling with a model. Was he being let on, or was he just that irresponsible? Unfortunately, when Blake was traded from the LA Clippers to the Detroit Pistons in January of 2018, the cross-country move essentially ended all hopes for a long-term relationship with Kendall. Now, his career declined from there mostly because of injuries. It's really his personal life that suffered after that. He built a reputation for being somewhat of a joke based on how he chased Kendall, who never really wanted him. Many have even speculated that Blake is the father Cuck. of the adult star Lena Rhodes' first child. Also, don't have kids with NBA players. That's another one. <laughs> That's definitely his kid. That is definitely his fucking kid. So, don't have- A hundred percent. Kids with NBA players. That's another one. <laughs> don't have kids with NBA players. Shit, bro. What? Yo. Wait, why not? Chat, what the hell? Your kid would be fucking- you, it is a good chance to be an NBA player. This rumor has led to Griffin becoming a meme within the NBA community. Blake was a superstar player at one point for sure, but his downfall seems more so because of his injuries rather than being tainted by the chaotic lifestyle of the Kardashians. Seeing how successful Chloe and Lamar initially were inspired Kim to get a basketball husband for herself, Chris Humphreys, which ended in Chris suing Kim for using him for publicity. Entering the NBA in 2004 as the 14th overall pick selected by the Utah Jazz, Chris Chris Humphreys was highly regarded as a promising basketball prospect. However, he was just okay. He averaged 4.3 points and 3 rebounds per game in his first 5 seasons, but he also only averaged 11.5 minutes of playtime. Chris was a decent player, but nowhere near the superstar that the Kardashians came for. However, in 2009, Chris began He's playing for the New guy. Jersey Nets. His playtime oh doubled, and so did his stats. Not too long after, he met Kim Kardashian through a mutual friend. But Kim was photographed hands. sitting courtside on He's multiple occasions at the hands. Uh, Center game, that no. fall. And though it was obvious the two were dating, they initially kept the status of their relationship a secret. But things escalated much quicker than we could have ever imagined. Seven months after meeting, Chris proposed to Kim. I saw this People magazine, I think at a Kings in New Jersey. I remember seeing this exact magazine. Kim at her home, placing rose petals on the floor that spelled out, Will you marry me? Kim said yes, and season six had a whole new plot. The massive and glamorous wedding cost a whopping $10 million. The ceremony was filmed for the four-hour E! special, Kim's Fairy Tale Wedding, which oh, aired God. on television two months later. You got, dude, imagine having your wedding... Filmed for four hours on a special. Kim, you... The couple quickly capitalized off the attention, appearing on The Ellen Show where they renewed their vows. <laughs> uh, he looks like the New Year baby. It's been five 
five weeks since your wedding, which is a long time for reality TV stars, so it's yeah. time to renew your vows. Unfortunately, Ellen's one-off comment foreshadowed their early <laughs> demise like Carlson, because Kim filed for divorce after just 72 days of marriage. For better, for worse, if for richer, for poorer, Rex, we do in sickness and in stream. health until death do us part. Those are pretty serious promises, let alone a $10 million wedding. Kim <laughs> said, I hope this marriage was forever but sometimes things don't work out as planned, which makes you wonder what the plan was. While Kim seemed content with simple. parting ways, Chris revealed his own statement that he was not done fighting for the relationship. I love my wife and I'm devastated to learn she filed for divorce. The Kardashians are not even hot. There, I'll say it. I'll say what no. everyone's thinking. They're not even hot. I'm sorry. They're just not. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, they're just not hot. I don't, I don't get it. Kendall is? Okay, wait. Yeah, she's hot. But, like, Kylie Jenner? Is it Kylie? I don't even know the names, dude. Is it Kylie Jenner? Wait, she's only 26. Who's the old fucking one? Kim. Kim Kardashian reminds me of, um... Sniper Wolf. Like, that is... I don't know why, but Kim Kardashian reminds me of Sniper Wolf so much. Kardashian fans immediately took Kim's side. They said Chris was always rude to her, and they could tell through the highly edited and scripted TV show that it obviously wasn't going to work out. For example... I'm just saying I want to raise my yeah. kids and live in LA. That's where I'm from. That's all I know. Dude, by the time you have kids and they're in school and all that, like... Oh my god, this boy's sure about you. Let's be honest. Obviously, this is... Based. I'm just saying I want to raise my kids and live in LA. That's where I'm from. That's all I know. Dude, by the time you have kids and they're in school and all that, like, and no one will probably care about you. Let's be honest. Obviously, this is a very rude and mean thing to say to your girlfriend. However, we don't know how much of this conversation was edited. What if right before this, Kim said, well, you're never going to be a Hall of Famer, so you should just quit. They also point to another clip during the wedding rehearsal. When you are surrounded by a family that directs your every move, directs the words that come out of your mouth, controls every situation to make it benefit them the most, something as small as refusing to shave your mustache feels like a victory. On top of that, media outlets are posting True. headlines that say, Chris Humphreys mocks Kim Kardashian's weight on show. This is what he said. Oh, oh, God, I ate a lot of wedding cake. I'm pretty sure everyone in history who's tried to lift up another human grunts and says how heavy they are. Are you kidding me? That's it? <laughs> That's like getting a hate threat about doing Pokemon Go. Pokemon Twitch plays Pokemon. Response to this divorce, Chris I never got a Pokemon Go hate thread. I don't think filed to annul the marriage, citing that it was fraud. An annulment is a legal ruling that erases a marriage by declaring the marriage null and void and that the union was never legally valid. Kind of confusing, but basically Chris was arguing that this marriage was all a spectacle for entertainment, where he was Yo. fully dedicated and serious the entire time. Listen, if you're gonna put your cameras on non-stop on a, on a relationship like that, all the time, it, there's definitely a little facade in it. There's just Yo. no way it's not. If you're going to do 24 hours a day, when you walk outside, everyone's just blaring the cameras at you. And when you go inside, when you do sleep and then you wake up and you have to film again. Chat, shut up. Yo, Barney, for the 62 months, shut up. I would never go through something and do something that wasn't real, or I didn't believe in, so I can really only speak for myself in terms of that. The pair reached a settlement in court in April 2013 after Humphreys dropped his annulment request, and their divorce Imagine was finalized shortly last after that. Humphrey. In 2017, Kim reflected on her reasons for marrying Humphreys, saying at the time, I just thought, holy sh**. 
I'm 30 years old, I better get this together. I better get married. But I knew on my honeymoon it wasn't going to work out. Chris expressed that he was in a dark place for a year after the split because he felt like the world hated him. I didn't even want to say anything to defend myself because it felt like I couldn't win. Although he wasn't really much of a star player before he married Kim, afterwards he started playing some of his best basketball. However, this yeah. failed marriage and the public siding with Kim shattered his reputation and overshadowed any of his career highlights, especially considering he was replaced with Kim's new superstar boyfriend, Kanye West. Now this is the one where it all goes south. This is where, is where it all, you know, honestly, chat, at this point, you know damn well Kanye could re release a godlike album and everyone will flock to, flock to him. The world would love him if he makes one good album right now. One. Not even an album. A few good songs. And the world will flock right back to him and love him again. Guarantee you. He makes a good album. Everyone's going to be talking about how good it was. And they don't care at all what he did. Did you see he cheered up? Uh, he showed up at Travis Const. Wow, I gotta really go back to school. What the fuck did I just say? Kanye and Kim's fallout is easily the biggest and most catastrophic of them all. Their relationship alone could be its own video. Well, yeah, Traplor Ross did it in three and a half hours. However, Kanye is trying to save his children from being used as pawns to become the successors of the Kardashian empire. Kris Jenner molded this formula of managing her kids' careers and capitalizing from their success. If I ever have kids, I will never put them on stream. I won't. There just happens that there will be a camera in the room. It will not be me putting them on stream, though. Yeah, he doesn't want that to be done. I'll have extra Emily stream. It'll be fine. Onto his kids, because it has already begun. In November 2021, Kim Kardashian launched a joint TikTok account with her eldest daughter, Northwest. Kim yeah. and North accumulated more than 130,000 followers in less than 24 hours. Their TikToks suck, all right? I've watched all of them. They're crap. People are now becoming fans of the nine-year-old. They claim she is exactly like Kanye, confident and unashamed of her attitude. Now, TikTok clearly states that the minimum age for a user is 13 years old, but they don't use age verifications when you sign up. Plus, Kim making this a joint account makes it seem like North has restricted access to it. We know this isn't true when North went live on TikTok by herself on her own personal phone. She ran into Kim's room where she said, Mom, I'm live. <laughs> I can't wait till my kid does this to me. Uh, it's gonna be so much fun. Okay, bye. After multiple other instances of North posting on TikTok, Kanye told Kim he didn't want her on the app, but she wouldn't listen, so he went public. Hey everybody, I just got off the phone with Kim. I told her to stop antagonizing me with this TikTok thing. I said, it's never again. I am her father. I know y'all don't respect fathers and the idea of family and media tries to promote something i said i am not allowing my daughter to be used by TikTok, to be used by disney all of us have been on TikTok. You. it's completely understandable why a father does not want his child to use that app but it's the frustration that Kanye omits and his very serious tone that makes people label him crazy and controlling. Kim disagrees and says Kanye is attacking her. Kanye's constant need for attacking me in interviews and on social media is actually more hurtful than any TikTok North might create. As the parent who is the main provider and caregiver for our children, I am doing my best to protect our daughter while also allowing her to express creativity in the medium that she wishes with adult supervision because it brings her happiness. However, just one year later and everyone agrees that Kanye was right. Northwest linked up with Ice Spice and shared a video of themselves and some friends singing along to Boys a Liar Part 2. North had previously posted a portrait she drew of Ice Spice weeks prior. It's Kim over. likely arranged their encounter so that the daughter could meet someone she looked up to, having done something similar in the past with Jojo Siwa. The video didn't initially spark much controversy as many felt the encounter was fairly innocent and playful. However, days later, things- Damn that fridge, what the fuck? with Jojo Siwa. The video didn't initially spark much controversy as many felt the encounter was fairly innocent and playful. Hold on. What the fuck is in the Kardashians? Is that just ego? Alcohol? A Gucci bag? Some ketchup? And ego waffles? This is literally what a streamer would have in their fucking refrigerator.
Oh my god, I really they have chefs. Yeah, they have like professional chefs. She made a video about her fridge. Why am I why do I want to watch that? Okay, so since the inside of my fridge is so baffling and I saw I all hate these, these new filters, reports, holy I'm fuck. Give you guys a tour of my fridge. So you'll come into my pantry. I have I got rid of all my plastic, so it's all like glass jars. Even all my sprinkles and stuff from that's so much walking. That's so annoying to do. I would be so annoyed that I have to walk this much to make food. That is a pain in the ass. My frozen yogurt. All of that. So you come. Do the chase? The pantry, oh, Lincoln. All there is is the frozen yogurt machine. And it's all the little snacks. My freezer. And then I got rid of all plastic bottles. So I just have. She doesn't need all the plastic bottles. She's in the fucking room. Playful. However, days later, things went too far after North posted a TikTok cosplayed as Ice Spice, wearing an outfit many deemed inappropriate for someone her age. Amid immense backlash, many questioned Kim's parenting, ultimately Ugh. forcing her to delete the video. Kim said, Dude. As soon as I saw the words, meaning the lyrics North was singing, I was like, oh no, we're taking this down. Which proves that one, Kim does let her 10-year-old use TikTok without supervision, and begs the question, why was she letting her daughter hang out with the 23-year-old rapper? Dude, TikTok is actually such a dog shit app dog shit like I, I i would never let my child do tiktok you can stream do whatever i will not let you touch that dog shit app tiktok or twitter you are never going on tiktok or twitter until you're at least like at least fucking like 15 i'm not letting you go near it i can't i can't i would i could never do it that was a good video